Let's talk about The Movie Goer by Walker Percy. This is a literary fiction novel from 1961 by the American author Walker Percy. Critically praised, it's in the Time magazine and the Modern Library Top 100 Novels of the 20th Century. Um, and it's not wanting for critical praise, but it's not a super widely known book, even amongst kind of lit fic booktube channels that I've seen. I think it's a very good novel and I think it's worth talking about. It's an existentialist novel in the sense that the central character, Binks Bolling, he lacks for a purpose, he lacks for a meaning of his life. The novel is about him wrestling for meaning and, uh, and for purpose. Uh, so other novels you might think of, the most obvious is Catcher in the Rye. That's a very famous one in America particularly. The idea of someone who is struggling to work out why on earth they're doing anything. Uh, this is a quote um, that sums up another thing about it. It's an easy read. It's beautifully written. So it, it is um, an emotionally interesting book and it's uh, a, an interesting book to read. So, for instance, he meets a salesman on a train, our character Binks Bolling. The salesman has no such trouble in terms of uh, existential trouble. Like many businessmen, he is a better metaphysician than the romantic. For example, he gives me a sample of his product. A simple L of tempered and blued steel honed to a two-edged blade. Balancing it in his hand, he tests its heft and temper. The hand knows the blade, practices it its own metaphysic of the goodness of the steel. It's just very beautiful to read. It's very well written. So the basic plot is Binks is a realtor, a real estate seller in New Orleans uh, from a half wealthy, half more... Uh, working class background. This It is set contemporaneously, so 1960 or so. Binks is a war veteran from the Korean War, and we see him drifting through life on and around his 30th birthday. And he's drifting partly because of his traumatic war service. Uh, he's also been marked by rapid changes in society, marked by his family relations, by his father's relatively early death. But he recognises there's a lack, and he knows he is on what he calls the search, and this is what he describes the search as what is the nature of the search you ask really it is very simple at least for a fellow like me so simple it is easily overlooked the search is what anyone would undertake if he were not sunk in the everydayness of his own life so binks is a daydreamer he's not sunk in the everydayness he is on the other hand unable to fully engage with the reality around him he's looking for something he's an observer of life rather than a full participant. He's a moviegoer. Uh, uh, his step-cousin Kate, who's really the other main character, if you want to pick another main character, she is much more raw, she's much more alive, uh, much more dangerous. And that manifests in behaviour that people think um, is her being crazy, but she's like, no, this is what I'm saying. The times I'm just depressed, that's when I'm crazy. The times I'm just, or that I'm just getting on with life, that's when I'm crazy. Uh, she she wants to seize life and, and enjoy it and really get to grips with it. So those are the two characters and they're on different searches, but you can see there's a parallel. And of course, they know each other well. Uh, she is his aunt's stepdaughter and they've grown up together to a, a, a small degree. So Binks and Kate are wrestling with the seeming emptiness of life in opposite ways. Binks drifts, he observes, he flirts with existence. Kate throws herself in, into life with wild abandon, but at kind of random spurts, and she's never able to really get to grips with things. And the book is basically Binks's journey, to a lesser degree it deals with Kate, but it's really Binks's journey. Can he integrate reality and himself? Can he, well, can his search find its destination? Can it find whatever it's looking for, or must it always search? Uh, there's a good kind of riff there or discussion about existentialism in general, the idea of, is it just about the search or about something else? And to get there, we see Binks travel through New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. Uh, he meets various people. He has various romantic liaisons. He meets both sides of his family, his wealthy father's side, particularly around his aunt, uh, but also uh, his mother, who's remarried and lives out in the bayou, and has a family, a second family, who he's very close to, particularly a disabled brother. And Percy's writing of these scenes, of the many other characters that connect with Binks, is always good. Uh, he's very good at drawing people who believe different things, care about different things, interact with the world in, in different ways. And this is, I think, a really underrated skill in writers is, I you could say, oh, just believable characters. But really what I mean is different characters, 
characters who don't match simply a writer's plan for the book and the kind of set of believable characters they want, but people who are alive. Almost the sub-creation has a life of his or her own outside the page uh, with a set of beliefs and cares outside of his or her own. Um, I think other people who are very good at that are Marilyn Robinson and, um, and John le Carré. I think they're both very good at the same thing. Ultimately, a comparison, as I said, that comes to mind is Catcher in the Rye, another book about uh, a youngish, a younger American indeed, but a youngish American searching for meaning, feeling frustrated by the constraints of life, not knowing how to express themselves or to be themselves. But the difference is, uh, I think, that, you know, Holden Crawford also feels lost and alienated and unsafe in ways that Binks and Kate do. But the difference is, this is just a better novel. Better writing, more sympathetic and realistic characters, more interesting questions and answers. Uh, and I think really maybe that's a half the cliche, but the great existentialist novel has to really deal with interesting questions and answers. Uh, the Plague by Albert Camus is another one that I think does a lot of good in that direction. If you've read this, tell me what you think. Tell me what other books dealing with people struggling with the meaning of life you've read and enjoyed and anything else that seems relevant. Tell me all that down in the comments. Till next time.